Google recently added Kotlin as an official programming language for Android. And so today I'm gonna to take you through some of the basics of Kotlin. And so in order to do that, we are gonna download an IDE and that's just gonna make things a little bit simpler for us when we're debugging and that sort of thing. And so I'm on JetBrains right now and we're gonna install IntelliJ. And going to the IntelliJ homepage here, we're just gonna kind of scroll down. You can see what the IDE looks like and we're gonna download it. And we're gonna download the community edition because we're gonna be using the Java Virtual Machine and doing some Android development later on. And so that is the version that you are gonna to wanna to download. And so I already have it downloaded, so I'm just gonna go ahead and open it. And make sure you have the latest version because it comes with a lot of built-in things for Kotlin, which is really nice and really easy to work with. So make sure you have the 2017 community version of this. And it's free, so you don't have to pay anything. And so once you have this open, you're gonna go ahead and click Create New Project. And this is how we're gonna create our Kotlin project. And you notice Kotlin here is an option, so you can go ahead and check that. And you'll see the Kotlin Java runtime down here. Now, if you don't have the JDK, which is the Java Development Kit, you might be getting an error up here. Not to worry, all you have to do is download the JDK. So you'll go JDK, just kind of Google it here and then click the Oracle link. And this will send you, you know, down the rabbit hole of downloading things. And so here we are. So you basically pick whichever is the best for your computer, depending on the specs, and download that. And once you have it downloaded, this will autofill for you so you don't have to worry about it. And yeah, so we are gonna go ahead and click Next. Creating this project, um, we are going to create a new folder over here and we're just gonna call it Hello World because it's our first project in Kotlin. And so we'll go and call the project Hello World and we're gonna put it inside of the Hello World directory that we have here. So if we go to desktop, Hello World, we're gonna go ahead and put it inside of there. We'll click Finish and this will init our project here. And so once it's all loaded up, you should see something similar to this. Your project name will be here. And if you go ahead and just click this, you'll see source. If you click that, you'll see everything kind of pop up here if you didn't have this window originally. And so if I didn't have it, then I could just do source and it would pop up. And here, SRE stands for source or source code, and that's where our Kotlin files are gonna go. And so we can go control click, hit new and we're gonna go Kotlin file slash class. And so creating our first file that's gonna hold our Kotlin code. And we're just gonna call it app, select okay. It's just gonna be a file. We won't worry about classes yet. And inside of this file, we're gonna write our Kotlin code. And so the first thing we're gonna do is write read only variables. And so you could kind of consider them constants, um, but basically variables that you set once, you read them, and that's all you really do with them. You can read them later on, reference them, but they're only gonna have that one singular value. And so here we're gonna have a read-only variable. We're gonna create one by going val. That's a keyword basically saying, I'm creating a read-only variable. And the name of our variable is gonna be k. k is in Kotlin. And then we are gonna have a data type associated with it, and that's gonna be an int, which just stands for integer, and so a whole number here. And the value we're gonna give it is four. And so when I reference k, I'm talking about the number four, and so if I was gonna do you know, k plus k, something like k plus k, I really mean four plus four, and that evaluates to eight. And we can create some more variables here. We could go val o equals three, and this is an inferred type, meaning that o, like we didn't state what type o was gonna be. We didn't say it's gonna be an int, or it's gonna be a double, or it's gonna be a float or a string. It just infers it from the value that we give it. And so we gave it the value three, so it's gonna infer, okay, three is a number, three is this data type. That is the type that o is going to be. And then we'll create one last read-only variable and it'll be t and we'll say this one is a double and give it the value 9.0 and so the reason why it's a double versus an int is because it has that 0, .0 which makes it you know have that decimal value instead of just a whole number value and so that's why it's not an int 
Next, we are gonna create some mutable variables. And so these are variables that we'll create, they'll have a value, and then we can change that value later on in the code. And so we can create a mutable variable with the keyword var, and we'll just call this one L, give it the value 10, again, using that inference. And so saying, okay, L has the value 10. Now L is gonna be a specific data type based on that assignment. And so we'll go var i, do that again with i, and give it the value 11. And then we'll go var in, in is the name of this variable, this mutable variable, give it the data type int, and then assign it three as its value. And then we'll create one more mutable variable, we'll go var, and it's gonna be called count. And then we'll give it the data type int, and then the value zero. So now with our read-only and mutable variables set, let's use them. In order to use them, we have to create something called a function. And so a function is just something that takes input, does some computation, and then returns an output. You've been using functions forever, even if you didn't know it. And so consider adding two numbers. That's a function because you take two inputs, two numbers, add them together, that's your computation, and then have one number as your output. And so we're gonna try doing this, but for multiplication right here in the code. And so to create a function in Kotlin, we go fun, that is the keyword, and then the name of the function, mult. And then we're gonna have two inputs, A and B, that's what we're gonna call them, and they're each gonna be of the data type int. And so we have A, data type int, B, data type int, and then this entire function, like now we have the input set, we also need to set the output, and that output is gonna be a whole number that is in fact an int. And so now that we kind of have our input and output set, we have to write the meat of the function or the actual computation that the function is going to do on these two numbers to then you know, output that final number. And so we are just gonna do a return A times B. And so fairly simple, you're just multiplying the two numbers, but let's say we also wanted to keep track of how many times we've called this function. Well, we can do count equals count plus one. And so at the beginning of the program, when we run it, we will have a count of zero, but every time we use this function, we say, hey, I wanna multiply these two numbers. Hey, I wanna multiply these two numbers. Every time we keep you know, calling it or saying, hey, we wanna do this, the count will be incremented. So in the beginning, zero, the count will have the value zero, we'll add one, the new value of count will be one. And then when we call the function again, it'll remember, oh, that count was one because we called it before and it'll remember that because these are global. And then we'll say, okay, count is one, add one, we get two, et cetera, et cetera. And now the new value of count would be two and as it goes on. Right now, this function is only a definition, a blueprint saying that a function called mult will take two inputs and output the result of their multiplication. In order to bring this into action and actually do something when the program runs, we need to add a main function. And so what is a main function? Well, it's exactly what you think it is. It's something with the keyword fun and it's called main. And then it's gonna have one parameter or input called args, just standing for arguments and then array string. Don't worry too much about what args or array and string, don't worry about what those mean. Just know that when we run the entire program, this, whatever's in between these two curly brackets, that's what's gonna happen. So everything else is kind of just a blueprint, just, you know, hey, these are definitions, these are things that exist in the world, but the actual, you know, action is gonna happen inside of the main function. And so now that we have the definition of our mult function, we wanna use it. And in order to use it, we need to call that function. And so to call it, we just use the function name, mult, and then put in four and five or whatever numbers that we actually wanna to multiply together. And so here you can kind of see it with this note, but A will have the value four and B will have the value five because those are the values that I'm calling or using this function with. And so if we go ahead and run it, we'll go ahead and select that, hit run. It might take a second if this is your first time running, 
And our function is run and nothing really happened. We just have this kind of thing here. We just say it exited with code zero. And code zero just means everything went smoothly. You're good to go. There were no errors. But what if I want something to show up in this little window down here, this console, um, as it's called? Well, I can print it out to the console. And to print it, I can just go print ln and then surround that with parentheses. Go ahead and hit play again. And so I can hit play up here, or I could go through this thing again and click the K. And now that it's run again, we get 20 in the console because the multiplication of four and five, that is 20. We could also print out our count here. And so how many times this mult function has been run called used, whatever word you want to use. Well, we can go print ln, the count is, and then use a dollar sign and then two curly brackets and put our variable name in there. And so the reason why we have this kind of weird, you know, characters and stuff is because um, we want to make sure that it's printing out the value of count versus just the word count. And so if we run this again, we'll go ahead and see one in the console, the count is one, because we've run the mult function one time. If we use mult more times, then that count would grow by one, you know, each time that we used it. Now one last thing before we go is that we can have a function with an inferred return type. And so we'll create a new function, we'll name it high, and it'll have one input which is a name. And instead of giving it a return type, I can just say high and then use that input name with the dollar sign name. And there you go. Now you have an inferred return type. And this is what this is going to return is the high name string, which is just another type of data. And so if we were to call it in the console here, we could go print a lin high and then say we use Catherine, which is my name. If we go ahead and call it again, we'll see hi Catherine inside of the console because that's what this returns based on the fact it infers it from the function. And there we go, we see hi Catherine. Thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial was helpful in helping you learn Kotlin a little bit, learning some of the basics. In the future, there'll be more advanced tutorials on Kotlin and how to use Kotlin in building your Android application, but here were some of the basics. If you have any suggestions, please leave them down below, and I hope you have a great day.